If you're new to programming, almost every tutorial starts off with the same example, a hello world example. And the purpose of it is simply to write the words hello world to either the computer screen, to, uh, to a web page, or in this case to the Windows Phone 7 emulator software that we're going to look at in just a moment. Uh, and so the purpose is really just to understand a couple of things. First, about the workflow of using the tools that help you build applications. Uh, understand a little bit about the programming language itself. Learn a little bit about testing the software. And so the, that's really what we're going to try to accomplish in this first video. And that is to build a simple Hello World application so that we can learn all those sorts of things about bu building Windows Phone 7 applications. And so I want you to follow along and do exactly what I do the way that I do it. In fact, if you have to, pause the video, rewind the video. Uh, whatever you have to do, make sure that you're following along. I want to make sure that these ideas are firmly cemented in your mind before we move forward. Now we're going to come back and we're going to dissect every little thing that we do in this video. But for now we're just going to kind of move through it without a lot of explanation so don't get frustrated if it doesn't make a lot of sense here. By the end of day one's worth of videos I think you're going to have a pretty firm grasp on what we did and beyond. Uh, also we're going to use these same basic steps in all of the examples throughout the remainder of this video series. Things like creating new projects and adding controls from the toolbox to the designer and setting properties and running the application, writing C sharp code, all those things. So it's really important that we get this nailed down as we get started. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, you can see that I have the Visual Studio 2010 Express for Windows Phone application open. Sometimes this is called an IDE for Integrated Development Environment. So I might refer to it as the Visual Studio IDE or you might see it on blogs and other websites. But at any rate, you can see when you first open the application, there's a start page. And the purpose of it is just to give you a friendly uh, starting point uh, to jump off on. Uh, you can see some community news on the right hand side. On the left hand side, you can get to recent projects or create a new project. We're going to go to the file menu and select new project as we get started. And so we want to make sure that uh, the correct template is going to be loaded whenever we create a new project. We'll explain templates and projects later on. But at any rate, just make sure that if it's not already selected that you have in this installed templates area on the left, you select Visual C Sharp and then the silver light for Windows Phone to correctly filter all the available templates to only those that we're most concerned with. We'll want to use the Windows Phone application template for pretty much this entire video series. Then in the name text box here at the bottom, I'm going to type in Hello World. And then I'm going to click the OK button. Now Visual Studio is going to work creating a brand new application for us, setting up some example uh, forms for us to work with, uh, we could do this all by ourselves if we wanted to, but it's so much nicer when we allow Visual Studio to build everything for us that we need to get started from scratch. So we can just jump right into the fun stuff like we're going to do here in a moment. Uh, as you can see here in this main area, I have uh, on the left hand side this area that looks a lot like a Windows Phone. In fact, if I were to scroll down, you can see that it even has these Windows Phone icons representing the buttons of the phone. And then there's some code here on the right hand side, we'll talk about that later, and some other windows there. But what I want to do is hover my mouse cursor over this little tab that says Toolbox. And if you'll notice that if you hover over it, it will appear and then disappear when you move your mouse cursor away. What I want to do is then select this little auto hide pin and pin this down so it doesn't keep moving back and forth. Uh, so once we've done that, then we can reposition and resize this window relative to the other windows within Visual Studio. The first thing I want to do is drag and drop a button control from the toolbox and place it onto the designer service in this specific area here that I'm moving my mouse cursor into. So as I begin the drag operation and move over here, you can see that there's a highlighted area that uh, allows me to see the drop zone that I'm about to drop this control into. We want to make sure that it's in this large area near the, uh, near the bottom underneath the word page name. Once we've dropped our button there, we can drag it again by clicking down on it and moving it around to reposition it into the, uh, the designer area if we want to. The next thing I'm going to do is go and get a text block, not a box, but a block, and I'm going to drag and drop that as well to our designer surface. And you can see I'm moving it around, and as I start repositioning it, it'll give me some feedback here about um, 
uh, how to line it up with other things that might already be on our little form. What I want to do now is concentrate on this lower right hand corner. There's a handle there that when I drag it, I can make a little bit of breathing room for our control and make it larger to accommodate more text. You may not need it, but I just wanted to point that out for now. The next thing that I want to do is work with the properties window. It should be docked in the lower right hand corner of Visual Studio. If it's not for some reason, you can go to View, Other Windows, and then select the properties window from that menu and it'll appear here. We want to make sure that the text block is selected. How do we know that it's selected? Well, right now we have a selection caret around it. I could select the button and you can see now the caret is moved to the button, but here I am back on the text block itself. Another way to know that we have it correctly selected is in this properties window, you'll see the name of this object. It's called a text block that will appear right under the word properties. What I want to do is move my mouse cursor to the right of that and click into that little area that appears. I'm going to start deleting the word text block one. I'm going to replace it with something I type in. And I want you to follow exactly what I do here. Lowercase m, y, then capital B for block. Whoops, let me go back. Capital T for text, capital B for block. There we go. And then I'm going to hit the return or the enter key on my keyboard. Great. And then I'm going to scroll down and find the text property and I'm gonna put my mouse cursor there and I'm gonna start using the delete button on my keyboard to remove all the text and then hit the return or the enter key on my keyboard again. And you'll notice when I did that, that the text that was represented in our like little phone area there, that designer area, it's disappeared now. So making a change in the properties window sometimes affects the way that things appear in the designer area. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing with the button. I'm gonna select the button, make sure that it's selected, I can see that it is in this properties window. I'm gonna rename it by hovering my mouse cursor to the right, clicking and then using the delete button to remove it, lowercase m for my, lowercase b for button. I'm gonna hit the return or the enter key on my keyboard. Then I'm gonna find the content property scrolling in the properties window. And again, I'm going to remove everything that's already in there and I'm gonna replace it with the word click me, okay? Now what I wanna do is click the save all button to make sure all my changes have been saved. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna create some code that will execute whenever somebody clicks the button. And to do that, we're gonna write some C-sharp code. How do we write it? I'm gonna double click into this click me button. That'll pop open a new tab in this main area here in the middle of Visual Studio. You can see we still have the other tab open. If I tab over, click this main page dot XAML, that our designer appears. Or I can click in this main page.xaml.cs file, the C sharp um, half of this particular page. We'll talk about that later. And I want to make sure that I type in this code block area that has been created called my button. Wait, that's what I typed. Exactly. That's why I wanted you to rename it. My button underscore click. All right, so this little area of code between these curly braces will execute whenever I click the button on the phone. Great. And here's what I want to do. I'm going to type in my text block. Then I'm going to use the period or the, um, the dot on your keyboard and then type in the word text. Take note of the capitalization. Capital T in text. Capital T in B for block and then another capital T for text. Spacebar equals spacebar a double quote, which is above the single quote, kind of near your enter key on your keyboard. Hello world, I'm going extra slow to make sure that we're on the same page. We'll pick up the pace, don't worry. And then finally, a semicolon at the very end of that line of code. Now I'm gonna save everything that I've done again, and I'm gonna run the application. I'm gonna use this start debugging button on my toolbar, and when I click it, one of two things are gonna happen. You're either gonna see what I see right here, which is great, or you're gonna see an error message pop up and we'll talk about that in just a moment. But I'm gonna move this emulator into our view. And you can see that our application loads into this emulator, which is simply the Windows Phone 7 operating system that's loaded as a virtual machine into your program, to your to your computer. So think of it as a computer in a computer.
okay? And we're gonna click the click me button using our mouse to simulate somebody's finger, our user's finger, who's clicking on the phone screen, and the word hello world appears. So if you got this far, congratulations, you built, successfully built your first Windows Phone 7 application. Now let me show you what may have happened if you typed in something incorrectly. I'm gonna use the stop debugging button back in the Visual Studio IDE that should be visible behind the Windows Phone 7 emulator. And when I click that, it will allow me to continue editing our code here. Now, if I forgot, for example, the semicolon on that line of code, and I try to run this application, I'm gonna get an error list that'll pop open, and it'll give me uh, an error number and what the problem was. Sometimes these errors are very descriptive. Sometimes they're a little bit cryptic, if you simply can't figure out by looking at the line of code what the problem is, you might be able to go online and find some help there or get on a, a forum and copy and paste or at least explain what you try to do. But at any rate, if I were to double click this error, it will take me to the line of code where that error is believed to be uh, occurring and then I can try to remedy the problem. You can see it gives me another visual cue where the problem is with the red squiggly line that's after the word hello world. By using now a semicolon once again, that error has disappeared from our errors list. I should be able to run the phone successfully one more time, and indeed I can. Okay, so uh, first of all, if you got this far, congratulations. This is the first step in the learning curve. Uh, it's a fun step, it's not necessarily a hard step, but the fact that you got yourself into the tool and that you're building applications and you see the entire workflow from beginning to end, that's an important first step, so let's not diminish it. In subsequent videos, we're going to take a look at this phone emulator software itself. We're going to dissect all of the work that we just did and so that we come to a fuller understanding of what we did and why we did it, more importantly. And then we're gonna get into the C-sharp language and start uh, building on our knowledge here of how to build more robust applications on the C-sharp side of things and then use that to drive the remainder of our effort to learn how to build more interactive user interfaces and then also how to take advantage of hardware that's built into the phone. So we'll see you in subsequent videos. Thank you. Thank you.